Thanks, Dimitri. Thank you. Well, I really guess that the after party went really well yesterday because uh, there are not too many people here, but at least you want to uh, get your themes approved. So, oh, thank you. Um, well, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Dmitry Mayorov. I, like uh, uh, was said, came from Moscow. And I am a theme designer, which means that I design and develop WordPress themes for a living. And I did that for uh, my clients for like four or five years now. And recently, I decided to try myself in creating public themes. Uh, because there are a couple of reasons for that. Simply, uh, the one of them is that I really can't imagine my life without creating themes. And uh, the second is uh, that I, was, I, I once wanted to uh, uh, find a simple theme for my portfolio and couldn't uh, find one because uh, many themes were uh, bloated with options and uh, some I didn't like. So I decided to create my own and founded a theme shop called Theme Patio. It's a new one and has only one theme yet. Uh, and released a first public theme called Maker. I am really excited that it now has more than a thousand active installs, which means that more than a thousand people actually use it on uh, their website. And it's a very basic portfolio theme that you can download and see how it works and see how it is built. So, uh, uh, we are going to discuss tips, but before that, let's uh, stop for a second and think why even bother uh, releasing a public theme if it's free and uh, what do you get from that? Well, personally, I believe that the more you give, the more you get, and WordPress is uh, something that gives us a lot. I mean, one way or another, it uh, puts food on our tables and new smartphones in our pockets. and uh, why not give back to the community and create a website, a theme that someone else can use, someone uh, can learn from it. Uh, in turn, you will get feedback, um, not only from theme reviewers, uh, but also from real users across the world. And believe me, when you're thinking that uh, the theme is done, when you're finished building it, uh, and you're thinking that there's nothing at to, to add or to remove from it, there's so many things that can be improved. And releasing a theme is a great way of finding those, those things, which in turn leads to becoming a better designer and better developer. So, uh, yeah, this is the uh, reasons why you release your, you would want to release your theme publicly. So, uh, the first thing, uh, the first tip I wanted to talk about in releasing, tips, uh, releasing themes is the GPL license. I know that many of you are familiar with, uh, with the GPL license, but uh, I decided to cover it anyway because the, the philosophy and the idea behind this license kind of drives the entire community because the WordPress itself is released under the GPL license. So, uh, uh, let's quickly refresh in our memory what uh, this license gives uh, the user of the theme and any software. It gives uh, the user free, four basic freedoms. It gives, uh, he is basically free to use the theme for any purpose. He is free to study the source code. He is free to modify it and uh, redistribute the theme or redistribute the modified copies. I know that two last points uh, may sound a little bit weird for those of you who have not heard of the GPL license, but it's actually a good thing and we'll um, cover that in uh, a little bit later. So, how exactly do we make a theme GPL friendly or uh, GPL compatible? Well, let's start with simple things. We first need to declare the license in style CSS and readme.txt. You see those two uh, blue lines uh, mentioning the name of the license and the license uh, URL. Uh, basically the website where, where you can read uh, the text of the license. So if your theme is simple enough, this is it. The, uh, you, you declare the license in those two files and it's GPL compatible. But I'm guessing that this is not the case with mo most of the themes nowadays because uh, 
uh, if you bundle anything, be that a jQuery plugin or a custom icon font or any, anything else, all those things, all those resources must be GPL as well or be GPL compatible. So if you are using anything uh, like, uh, let's say, type icons, uh, you have to uh, make sure that uh, that uh, icon font is GPL or GPL compatible. Same goes for uh, images that you use in your theme, including images that you use uh, in a screenshot that uh, goes to the theme repo. Uh, and you have to mention all those resources, images and custom code in readme.txt file. This is actually the thing that I forgot to uh, do when I first submitted Maker to the repository. So uh, I know that uh, there are so many licenses out there and it's very easy to get confused about all of them, but the good news is that it's very easy to check what license uh, is GPL compatible and what license is not. You just go to gnu.org website under the link you see on the screen, and can see the list of all compatible and incompatible licenses with uh, GPL. So summing up the uh, first tip, you need to declare the license in style CSS and readme DXT, bundle only GPL friendly code, use GPL friendly images, and provide all in info in readme TXT. So this is basically how you make your theme GPL. Um, the next tip, uh, don't start from scratch. I know this is also may sound very obvious for those of you who are already, already building themes, but um, let's just quickly uh, mention some of the options for those who are just beginning. So the most obvious choice for starting, building, uh, starting uh, a new theme is to use underscores, which is a starter theme that was used to build default themes like 2016, 15, and some of the others. Uh, it has a great markup and PHP foundation and doesn't have too many, too much uh, styles to remove. So you can start building your theme on top of that, on top of underscores, and uh, like it will save a great amount of time. Another option is components, which I think was uh, discussed yesterday. Uh, it has several pre-built patterns for building sites like portfolio, uh, magazine uh, websites, business type websites, and every uh, 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 it has uh, several pre-built partners, like I said, and you can choose one of them to uh, build a theme uh, with, uh, and it will have uh, something special for uh, building a, a theme of the chosen type. Um, and like underscores, it has a builder on the website where you can provide, uh, where you can set your own name for a theme and download the zip archive and start building the theme right away. It'll also save a uh, huge amount of time. All right, next tip, follow the requirements. Um, easier said than done, but um, I know that um, it's very easy to get confused about uh, the amount of the requirements you need to follow in order to uh, get your theme to the repository. But uh, the goal of this talk is not to provide you with a complete checklist, but rather uh, give a head start and uh, useful links to uh, look up because uh, it's not about knowing everything, it's about knowing where to look. So I'll cover the most uh, misunderstand it or uh, requirements or something that I messed up myself when I first submitted Maker. So you will not make these kind of mistakes. And um, the first thing, don't hard code any scripts and styles to head section and footer of your website. Instead, use WP NQ script and WP NQ style. Um, I know this is very obvious, but uh, I did theme reviews as a volunteer and Every theme that I was reviewing uh, had something uh, wrong with the scripts. I, this is uh, just uh, something that beginner developers tend to uh, misunderstand. So uh, also, uh, talking about scripts, WordPress bundles uh, many useful tools and libraries like jQuery, like uh, Backbone or Underscore, and if you're using one of these uh, tools, you need to use bundle versions and not allowed to uh, load one from uh, your theme folder. 
So this is the example of how to add jQuery, for example. One of the examples, uh, one of the ways of adding jQuery. Um, and you can uh, look up the full list of bundled resources under the link you see on the screen. All right. Uh, next thing, prefix everything. This is also uh, something that beginner developers tend to uh, 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 not, not doing right. I mean, uh, let's um, see the example. Let's say you have a function called uh, output in your theme. And think what will happen if you install a plugin and it has a function with the same name. A fatal error. So the best way to do is uh, to prefix functions. This will uh, prevent this kind of things uh, and uh, will get your theme approved, uh, not declined because of the prefixing thing. Um, next thing, validate and sanitize all the data that comes in and out of the database. Um, I know this may sound a bit scary and confusing for beginner developers, but uh, it really is not about doing uh, some hard, uh, um, I mean, WordPress provides us with, does all the heavy lifting for us, and all we have to do as team developers is to understand the concept and use the right functions at the right places. So. Uh, Let's say you ha want to add an option to customizer to uh, provide the user with a possibility to add custom footer text, like this one. So this will look, uh, this will be outputted in the footer and basically used as a copyright text. The main thing here is to make sure that user does not save any potentially harmful data to database. Uh, using that field in the customizer. And to do that, there, there are a lot of functions that will strip out all the potentially evil uh, scripts and styles and other things. But one of them is sanitized text field. Uh, so in order to prevent a user from saving any harmful data, we need to pass it as a sanitized callback. Simple as that. Uh, and this is not everything. Before displaying that function, we need to actually escape HTML uh, because the database can be altered directly. It's not something that happens every day, but still plausible. So uh, rather than uh, just echoing the data from customizer, from the database, uh, we first need to get it and then pass it through escape HTML function. So, uh, as you can see, the concept is uh, not very hard, and you can see, you can look up all the available functions for escaping and sanitizing data under the link you see on the screen. Um, the next thing, translatable strings. This is something that is different uh, between building a theme for a client and building a public theme, because if I know for sure, if I'm building a theme for a client and know for sure that it will not be used uh, in languages other than English, it's perfectly safe to do something like this and just display a string. But it's different with public themes. We need to provide uh, the users and with the possibility to translate themes. And uh, to do that, we need to pass the string to the translatable, uh, to the special function uh, and provide the theme slug. Theme slug is basically a custom string that you use throughout the code of the theme. Uh, and uh, this is how it works. Or uh, there is another function that looks something like this that just simplifies things. But um, this is also not everything, because if we do something like this, we provide the translator of the theme with uh, a possibility to add custom HTML or even JavaScript to a theme if it is used in other language. So instead of doing this, we need to do this, combining the uh, translatable string with the escape HTML function that we used in one of the previous examples. So um, yeah, you can find more info on translating uh, themes under the link you see on the screen as well. Um, another thing in, under the requirements tip is theme versus plugin territory, which um, I think is 
also very important. So think, for example, it may be very tempting to add uh, something like Google Analytics code for uh, into uh, Google Analytics field to add Google Analytics code to customizer, but uh, sooner or later, uh, the user will change the theme. And if he changes the theme and the Google Analytics code is saved within the theme mode, it will no longer be, ve uh, be on the website and Google will not be able to track visitors of the website. So it's much better to use a plugin for that. And uh, same goes for custom SEO settings and other things like that. Uh, so don't go to plugin territory if you are a theme developer. Uh, yeah, like I said, the goal of this talk is not to, pro to cover all the requirements, but rather give you a uh, place to look. So the full list of the requirements that theme need to follow, needs to follow can be found in the handbook, and you can see the link to the handbook on the screen. All right, um, next tip. And if you were to take out only one tip from my talk today, I would say learn the source code of the default themes because they are really um, hidden gems in terms of code quality because they are used uh, by millions of people around the world. And uh, like I said before, the GPL license gives us the freedom to learn the source code. Source code. And this is why uh, studying the default themes uh, is actually a great thing. You can also study uh, other themes from the repository as well because some of them are really great. Um, all right, uh, the next thing, when the theme is done, it's probably the best idea to test it before you submit it to a repository. And I'll be talking about uh, testing themes in terms of code quality and in terms of content handling because uh, these are the things that uh, themes are required to follow in order to get to the repository. So the first thing you need to do to test the theme before releasing it is actually enable the debug mode. Well, actually you need to enable the debug mode even before you write the first line of code. So you do that in wp-config-php uh, and uh, it will allow you to see all PHP errors uh, during the development of the theme. Um, next thing you need to do is, uh, you need to get is to install, as, uh, to, uh, install a theme check plugin. Basically, it's a plugin that is designed to test the themes uh, against uh, WordPress uh, requirements violations. And if your theme has something wrong with it, uh, it will tell you what to fix. And if it passes all the tests, you'll see the nice green screen like this one saying that everything is okay. Um, Next thing, uh, one of my favorite tools in terms of testing themes is the code sniffer with uh, WordPress coding standards. Uh, the code sniffer is a command line tool that allows you to check your theme against uh, not just requirements, but against WordPress coding standards violations uh, from uh, missing uh, space to missing and escape HTML functions. And it can scan all your files and output the list of uh, mistakes and errors that you made, which is very, comes in very handy. So, um, uh, in terms of content handling, uh, the first thing you need to do to check your theme is install the theme unit test data. Basically, it's a combination of all the available um, uh, of, of the content that user can uh, put in the editor and uh, create within from within the dashboard. Uh, it's a great way to test your theme against uh, edge cases, like for example when uh, a post doesn't have a title or when it has a huge amount of tags or categories. Those things must not break the layout of the theme and the theme unit test is a great way to test uh, the theme against those things. So, uh, next thing is the monster widget plugin, which is basically a combination of all the default widgets uh, uh, combined in one. So you can just drag one widget to the sidebar and have all the default widgets uh, and see how they look uh, 
on the website. Uh, and the last uh, tip in terms of uh, testing theme, um, in terms of content handling, is test your theme with real content. I have a copy of my own blog uh, on my local environment and the copy of my uh, sister's blog. So I usually test my themes uh, with uh, that content as well because uh, it's a great way to see how the theme handles uh, real content and because the theme unit test data and monster widget, uh, they do not give you the idea how the theme will look like because they are kind of messy. Um, all right, uh, now that your theme is passes all the tests and you're happy with it, uh, this might be also a very good idea to become a reviewer yourself because uh, this will uh, most likely uh, give you an idea how the whole system works. Uh, I mean the system of re uh, uploading, reviewing, the track tickets and all this stuff. Uh, you will probably uh, learn new things from the theme you'll be reviewing and uh, help other people learn as well, uh, which is also giving back to the community, which is cool. So, uh, yeah, if you didn't do that, uh, you can try becoming a reviewer because um, uh, new tickets, new themes are coming in every day and uh, the, I think the theme review team will really appreciate if you could help out. And the last tip, which I think is one of the most important, is uh, goes like this. Keep it simple, because I know it may be very tempting to include lots of options to customize or to provide the user with the possibility to change things, uh, but uh, think of it this way. The, the less uh, options you add, uh, the less code you'll have to write. And, um, the less code the reviewer will have to go through in order to check your theme. And uh, the less time the user will actually uh, spend figuring out how the theme works. And the more time the user will actually spend creating content rather than uh, figuring out the, the way how your theme works. So um, this is it, thank you. I'll be happy to answer some questions if you have, happen to have one. Thanks, Dimitri. So we have um, 10 minutes or so for questions. Um, we've got some mic runners. Um, so pop your hand up if you have a question. We'll get a mic to you. And then speak into the mic and enunciate your words. Um, <clears throat> it's more of confirmation, really. Um, you touched on uh, validation and sanitation. Yeah, OK. Um, and one goes in, one comes out. So it's more about escaping. I read somewhere not so long ago, but um, it was about escaping late. So I just wanted to wonder if you knew the answer to that, or you could elaborate on that. I, th I think it's something to do with if you if you escape something in a function, that's the wrong way to do it, and you should escape at the very last when you echo it out. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. Is that is that basically so? That's just. That's well, confirmed. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. It's a good way. It's it's a great idea to escape as as uh, late as possible because um, you uh, don't know. Uh, well, uh, let's um, a simple example. Probably. Uh, so, if a variable has uh, uh, retrieved some value from the database, and you know now that it uh, does not have any potentially harmful data, but it might. Uh, this thing may, uh, may change in future, and uh, escaping as late as possible is a great way to prevent uh, against those, uh, to, uh, I mean, make it as safe as possible and to prevent any uh, bad things in future. Great, thank you. Yeah, here. Hey, um, I hope you don't mind me asking this, but how do you market your themes? So how, how do you actually sell them? How do you put them in, in front of people so that they actually um, take them? Because there are, there are a lot out there, obviously. So how do yours take precedence yeah. over the others? Uh, so the question is, how do I market my themes? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, that's a good question. 
I first uh, wanted to, a uh, couple of years before uh, releasing the, my first team, I wanted to get on Theme Forest because I saw all these um, uh, theme developers that uh, create uh, themes that are sold there and wanted to do the same. But um, I didn't want to um, create themes like that. I wanted to do simple things. And Theme Forest, um, how do I put it? They don't really like simple things. They uh, tend to like things that bundle all the stuff in, in them. Uh, so uh, Maker, the theme that I released, is free. And you can get it for free from the repository. And it also has some uh, additions that you can uh, buy directly from, from, from my website. Um, but mm, I'm not sure that, uh, well, yeah, this is basically it. Uh, probably I'll try to submit, uh, submit the theme to Theme Forest, but um, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Great. So you, you're almost upselling then, ra rather than directly well, selling. It's yeah, yeah, free yeah. and then an upsell. Yeah. I think it's a great way for user to uh, test the, yep. the, and get the idea how the theme works because uh, the it happened a lot of times with uh, my customers that they bought a theme from Theme Forest and then they did not like it or it was badly coded or uh, so if you can test the theme before actually uh, upgrading, I think it's a great way. It, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thanks. I just wonder, was wondering whether we can get your slides because there was so much information I couldn't get um, everything. I'm sorry, I did not get that. Your slides, your presentation, could we download them from somewhere? Uh, which because slides? Every, all of them because there were so many links. Oh, and yeah, I I'll, get I'll put the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I'll yeah. put the link right, okay. right after. So, thanks, yeah. that's all. Uh, thanks for the, for the great talk. Uh, I wanted to ask you if uh, you provide paid support for your theme, and if it's a good uh, business model to to you know to to keep the theme free but provide paid support. So the question is, uh, uh, is it is it a good business model to uh, provide paid support? Um, I think yes, because. Um and not all the users of the theme are experienced with WordPress, and they uh, tend to uh, misunderstand simple things which are very easy for people who um, are doing it like every day. So uh, helping them is uh, not something that takes much time, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's a great way to help out and maybe earn some money, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, it's right there. Hi, Dimitri. Um, my question follows on from the last question a little bit, um, which is that um, I guess once you've released your theme and you now have a thousand people, or maybe more than a thousand people using it, um, I'm imagining that those people uh, want to contact you to tell you about bugs that they're having, request new features, um, complain about something, pat you on the back and tell you how great it is. How do you, as a, as a theme developer, how do you manage dealing with um, the free support that you're kind of expected to provide? Um, well, that's a great question. Uh, and this is what is good with simple themes, because you don't create any custom functionality that user is uh, seeing the first time. And you're using only uh, features that comes with WordPress, which many of users are familiar with. So, uh, said that uh, I don't get too many support requests that um, are heavy to ha are hard to handle. So basically, I get questions: How do I uh, cut the insert the continue reading uh, link on, uh, after the post, or how why my featured images are not the right size, which is basically uh, leads to saying install regenerate plugins, uh, regenerate thumbnail plugins, and uh, this is it. So that's this is what is good with uh, creating simple things. 
Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Yes, yeah, right there. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. Uh, I was a little late. Uh, for sure, you have that in the presentation, but I just wanted to learn a little bit about if you can explain the steps or for a new developer, uh, what is the best way to get and learn and put a new theme down there? Uh, it is a guide or is uh, something for from, uh, from WordPress with best practices that we have to follow. Do you know what I mean? So uh, the question is how to uh, keep up with the community and create theme. Yes. Okay. Um, I think that the best thing to do is to do things that you love doing and uh, don't look at everybody else. Uh, as like silly as it may sound, but um, only by uh, creating uh, something that you really, only by doing something that you really enjoy doing, you'll get uh, the feedback that you want to get. And uh, it worked pretty well for uh, my theme because uh, I really did not expect so many people to install it. But uh, yeah, so uh, I guess this is the answer. Uh, hi, Dimitri. I'm over here, sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, just some of the numbers. Um, how long did it take you to complete your theme? How long has it taken to get a thousand users? Um, and um, it was released, uh, I think, in uh, November 2015 or December. Not, don't remember exactly. And uh, yeah, so it's like a couple, two or three months. Um, and it took me about two months to build it. I know it's a lot of time, but I was uh, not sure that I'm doing everything right and was constantly uh, testing the theme. And there are still a lot of things to, to, uh, to improve. And because it's, uh, it's a process. You can just create a theme, get it to the repo, and forget about it. It's, it's, a, it's a constant process of improving and learning and changing. Yeah, it's just like that. And, and with a thousand downloads, what is this, the ongoing support? What does that look like in terms of are you getting questions on a daily or a weekly basis? Well, yeah, like I said, I don't get too many questions because the theme is very simple. It, use, it, it uh, uses only WordPress features. It, uh, well, it, it can, it is, um, it works with Jetpack, uh, custom portfolio. Uh, Type and uh, the pro version only adds uh, possibility to change colors. So uh, yeah, it's pretty easy to use, and that's what is good with uh, simple themes. So uh, this is why I don't get too many support requests. Yeah, yeah it's right here. I was just wondering how you manage um, version control. Are there any requirements for that? Um, I use Git, uh, and the theme is also available on GitHub, so you can see all the things that are going uh, behind the development there. I try to uh, make good commit messages, uh, because I'm really crazy about it. And uh, I also um, have a pro version in a separate branch on my computer that I uh, sync with Bitbucket. So this is basically it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so I wanted to um, loop back on something you've talked about a little bit already. Um, but I wanted to just uh, kind of ask you to expand on it. Um, something I see, I guess, a, a lot of themes and theme developers doing is, um, uh, I guess, filling their themes with features. Um, and you touched on it with the Google Analytics um, problem, which is that if you're storing Google Analytics data in the theme, then the, they're going to lose that when they switch themes. Um, but, but what, I guess, how do you, as a theme developer, 
Um, how do you decide what functionality should be part of your theme and what functionality should be in a plugin? Uh, it's a really simple rule of thumb. If the option uh, deals with uh, the visual representation of the website, it's a theme territory. If it's uh, if it has nothing to do with visual representation, it's a plugin. So uh, recently, um, well, actually, I'm building a new theme right now, and I had a question in my mind: uh, Is it a good idea to add an option to a widget that would uh, change the text alignment? And I asked this question on Slack, and uh, some theme review team admins uh, just gave me that advice that I. Singing right now. Nice. Oh. Well, I guess this is it. Okay. I think we're uh, I think we're about out of time anyway. Um, so let's uh, give Dimitri a round of applause. Thank you.